Hey everyone, what is going on? Welcome again here at Young and Investing. In this video, we are going to talk about the Leo token. And we're going to talk about it because a lot of people ask me if it is interesting to buy this token or not, to invest in it or not. And I am going to give my own opinion. Of course, I'm not a financial advisor, so you should do your own research before you uh, you want to invest in it or, or maybe not want to invest in it. It should be based on your own decision. We are currently on CoinGecko because Leo token is not yet on CoinMarketCap, but it already is here on CoinGecko. And we see that Leo token is currently number 13 here. So the 13th biggest cryptocurrency that is currently out there. Leo token, its sticker is Leo. It is currently worth $1.89. And it, the volume is 28 million in the last 24 hours and 1.9 billion dollars is the market cap of the Leo token. And if we have a look, we see that the available supply compared to the total supply is 1 billion out of 1 billion. So there are 1 billion created and there's 1 billion in circulation. It's that easy. 100% is in circulation, which is a good thing, of course. Uh, so yeah, that is Leo token and the exchange here. You see that it is traded on Bitfinex and Eatfinex and some other smaller exchanges as well. But most most importantly, um, Bitfinex and Eatfinex. These two exchanges together have uh, almost 70%. If we count these smaller ones here uh, with it, they have 70% of all the volume on the Leo token. And it is no coincidence that Bitfinex has all of this volume because the Leo token is a project by Bitfinex. So Bitfinex launched a utility token just as Binance launched the Binance coin. So we see, for example, Binance here, the Binance coin is worth $4.6 billion and currently Leo token is $1.9 billion. So uh, Binance coin is uh, more than double as big as Leo token in terms of the market cap. So Binance coin, Leo token, we can really compare them to each other because they are very similar, both in in what the creator of them. So it's it's an exchange, a big exchange who created them, but also in token economics, they are very similar to each other. So basically the Leo token is just a copy of the Binance coin token, probably because Bitfinex saw how well Binance coin has been doing since it is launched a few years ago. So that's probably um, how they did it. So they just copied the token economics and the concept of the Binance coin. But the story goes way back than that because Bitfinex is pretty controversial. We know that it's one of the biggest exchanges, but it's pretty controversial. Why? Because they own Tether. And Tether is number 11 here on CoinMarketCap with a market cap of 2.07, so $2.1 billion. And every Tether is $1. So it is a stable coin. And every Tether that has been created should be backed by $1 in their bank account. But until today, Tether has not given any proof that every Tether that they created is backed by $1. And they claim that it is. So they always have claimed that it is. And when they had an accountant that it was auditing um, the Tether treasury and the Tether situation, uh, he got fired and stuff. Um, nobody really gave us any proof that Tether is legit covered by the amount of Tether that is created in dollars. So actually in their bank account, there should be 2 billion 67 million 123,443 dollars it's just that simple but what happened with tether well it's not only controversial but then this happened so bitfinex they lost 850 million um, and they covered this loss using tether funds which is very very weird situation so what happened is that Bitfinex has a payment provider called Crypto Capital. And this payment provider uh, was holding 850 million of Bitfinex, its money. And this payment provider, this 850 million was seized by the government when it was in the hands of this payment provider. So Bitfinex currently cannot access this 850 million dollar anymore because it is seized on the bank account of Crypto Capital because they're investigating Bitfinex and the entire situation uh, around Tether, etc. So that is what happened. And suddenly they had 
850 million that was simply gone and they couldn't access anymore. So what they did was they thought like, hmm, maybe it's a good idea to launch a utility token and just raise the funds again. So what they did was they didn't launch 850 million Leo tokens. No, they launched one or they created 1 billion uh, Leo tokens. So they sold all of them. So they raised in total $1 billion and the money that they lost was $850 million. So that's very weird in my opinion that they just decided to uh, create 150 million more Leo tokens than what they lost um, in, uh, in the crypto capital situation. So 150 million is the profit they made from launching their Leo token. And that is the reason why they did it because this leo token was the solution for them to get back this 850 million in yeah a legal way let's say because they simply create a utility token and they have the funds and that's it and this leo token can be used for all kinds of things on the bitfinex exchange but let's have a closer look to what the leo token wants to do because as i said it is pretty similar to the binance coin launched by binance and if we want to go to the website of the leo token there is no website because you simply um it simply opens the bitfinex website so there is no separate um website for the leo token not even when it was an ICO, but anyway, uh, it has a white paper and the white paper is 18 pages long. But to be honest, it's one of the worst white papers I have ever read because it simply is talking about who Bitfinex is, what they are doing. We all know what it is doing, um, which platforms they have, such as Eatfinex as well, what they want to launch in the future, EOS Finex, they want to launch that in the future. That is what they're talking about. They're also talking about this entire situation about crypto capital, the Binance hack, etc. They're They're like talking about all kinds of stuff that has nothing to do with the Leo token or at least should have nothing to do with the Leo token. But apparently they don't really care that people uh, know why they are doing it and that it's simply because they lost this 850 million. That is the only reason why they, they are doing it. So they're actually openly admitting at that in the, in the white paper, if I read it like this. So it's pretty, pretty bad. It doesn't talk about the Leo token at all. This is basically the only few pages. I think it's like one, two three pages that talk about the leo token um out of this entire white paper so it's very very short but i want to tell you guys what the leo token wants to do and how the token economics works because of course that is important if you want to invest in it so we see that on a monthly basis ifnx and its affiliates we will buy back leo tokens from the market equal to a minimum of 27% of the consolidated gross revenues of Ifinex. And Ifinex is the, the mother company of Bitfinex. So the profits that Bitfinex generates, 27% of that they are going to buy back the Leo tokens with. So that is how they want to create value and they that's how they want to create scarcity and uh, lower the, um, the circulating supply every month and increase the price, of course. In addition to the above, an amount equal to at least 95% of the recovered net funds from crypto capital will be used to repurchase and burn outstanding LEO tokens within 18 months from the date of recovery. So that is, let, let's, let's be honest, that's pretty attractive for investors to, to see something like this. So they launched a utility token, but if they manage to get back their funds from the crypto capital uh, seizure by the government, if they get back their funds from that, they are going to use 95% of this entire, um, the, of the entire amount that they get back to buy back the LEO tokens within 18% of the date of recovery. Also, at least 80% of the recovered net funds from the Bitfinex hack of three years ago, in which they lost, I think it was 115,000 Bitcoin or something like that. So if they get back money from that, they will also use 80% of that to buy back Leo tokens. So it is a win-win situation for Bitfinex. If they don't get back the funds from crypto capital or the funds from the Bitfinex hack, 
they still have their Leo token, which um, they raised one billion dollars with. So their situation is solved in that case. But if they get back the money, if they do get back the money, they will use it to um, to buy back the Leo tokens, and they still have this one billion dollar raise. So their problem is already fixed, and it's also a good thing I think for the investors because if they don't get back the money from crypto capital or the Bitfinex hack, they still or Bitfinex is still going to do a repurchase or a buyback program of twenty seven percent of their revenues every single month. While for example, Binance Coin or Binance is uh, buying back with 20 or 25 percent every quarter also their bnb tokens to create scarcity so bitfinex is doing something very similar and to be really honest this this is pretty attractive for an investor to invest in because we can speculate on the fact that they will get a part of that money back um maybe from the crypto capital seizure or from the bitfinex hack and if that doesn't happen they still are going to buy back um the tokens every month with 27 percent of the money they earned and create scarcity um that way and make the price go up so to be really honest it's well played by bitfinex um to to handle things like this i don't agree on the fact that they solved it like this but this was the best way to do it if they wanted to solve this via an ICO of a utility token. I think this is pretty fair towards the investors. So the investors still get their fair share of value in this um, Leo token. And yeah, it's interesting for, for both parties. So maybe it's just a win-win situation and it's not that bad after all. Anyway, my honest opinion on Bitfinex and the Tether situation and then this Leo token, it's all so weird. It's all a story that that's really like, it feels really shady if you see stuff like that. I don't know if it is shady. I think Tether is shady. Bitfinex, I don't know. Uh, the Leo token is probably not shady. Uh, and everything they promise to do with the Leo token, they will probably do that. So that's that's a good thing. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I personally, for now, I'm not going to invest in the Leo token. But I do think that um, that it could be a good investment, especially if... Bitfinex will get back the money from crypto capital or a part of the Bitfinex hack. If that happens, we can really see this price increase rapidly. But of course, that's purely speculative. That's purely speculation um, if that would happen or not. Nobody really knows at this point. I don't think Bitfinex know it themselves. So that is actually it about the Leo token. Let me know in the comments down below if you think it is interesting to invest in it or not, or what you think about this entire situation and the reason why they launched this uh, the Leo token because of the Tether uh, and Bitfinex situation of 850 million that was lost. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and see you next video. Cheers. Bye bye.